Hello creatives and welcome back to my channel. Today we're diving in to Photoshop on the iPad and we're going to see everything that is new in this version of Photoshop. I have not reviewed Photoshop on the iPad in a while. My last video, I'll pop it up on the screen, you can go and watch that if you would like to. Uh, it was just an overview of everything, so let's see what is new. Before we do that, I know there are a lot of new people here, so thank you for watching. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. We also hit 200 subscribers. I'm so excited. It's another milestone for my channel, so thank you guys. I'm glad you guys are enjoying all the content. You are more than welcome to leave a comment down below and let me know of anything you would like me to go over. Anything Thing you want to see. So let's dive in to Photoshop. So I have the program open right here. Everything that is new gets showcased right here. There's also a, another screen under the toolbar over here under learn. You can see all the things that are new upcoming and are there. So you can see how to accomplish anything you want in Photoshop. Let's go back to home and let's see what is new. Now, the first thing that I see on here is the healing brush. The healing brush is pretty important because it allows you to basically heal your image of anything that might be wrong with the image or disjointed with the image or if there's like uh, any kind of marking on the image that you don't want there, you can always use the healing brush to fix it. That's going to be fun to dive into. I do have a photo that we are going to be working with and I'll showcase each one of these things to you guys in just a minute. Next is brushes. I am so excited that they finally have brushes that are more than just the basic brushes because now you can load your brushes, any kind of brush file that you want in the program. You can do all of that in the brushes panel and just press the plus icon to upload any brushes that you have, that you purchase, that you make yourself. Speaking of making yourself, they now have brushes that you can make yourself, but they also offer brushes for free from Keith Haring. He is a really good, well-known artist. He has a whole slew of brushes that they are giving for free that you can download from the brush library. That's exciting. I'm going to be downloading those in just a minute. I did say that you can create brushes yourself and you can. Brushes with Capture is new. Brushes with Capture allows you to take any kind of photo that you want of anything that you make. Let's say you drew, I don't know, a leaf. You drew a leaf and you took a picture with your phone and wanted to use it as a brush. Well, you can, using the Adobe Capture app on your phone, take the picture of what you drew and then upload it into the Brushes panel here in Photoshop on the iPad, which is so nice. So that's gonna be really fun. I'm not gonna showcase that one today precisely, uh, but that may be an upcoming video if you all wanna see how that works. Let me know down below. They always put a teaser in there because they're all like, oh wait, we're still working on other things. And it's like, okay, tell me what you're thinking. What are you gonna come up with? Apparently here, they're still working on the magic wand tool you all know or maybe you don't know, but I'm sure anyone who's worked in Photoshop knows how important the magic wand tool is when it comes to selections. It just makes selections so much easier, especially if you don't want to use the pen tool to do all your selections. Now, um, sharpen your image. I'm surprised that that wasn't just there from the get-go, but they're working on it. Grids and guides. I did notice that grids and guides are really not there. <laughs> I don't know why that wasn't a given in the beginning. Color swatches. Yes, <laughs> that is one of the pain points in this program. Auto select layers, smart objects, raw file support, and more. Like, they're going to come out with so much, especially with smart objects. It's going to be interesting to see how that works in this capacity here. But let's dive in to the photo, and we're going to do a healing brush option, and we're also going to look into those free brush downloads, and we're going to use and test out some brushes. So let's dive in. I have a photo right here. Okay, so this is my boyfriend's car and I have it set here and we're going to use the healing tool, which is on the left toolbar. You're going to see tools on the left toolbar and then you have navigation on the right toolbar. But for the left toolbar, it's right underneath the paint bucket. If you tap on it, there are 
quite a few tools here. There is the clone stamp tool, thank goodness, because clone stamp tool is one of the main tools when it comes to retouching and refining photographs. Um, you also have the spot healing brush and you have the healing brush. So we're gonna keep it on the spot healing brush for now. Let's zoom in here and see where we want to use this. I think what I'm gonna do, there's a plane up there. Let's use the spot healing tool right over here and just take this out here. And as you can see, once we have made our brush selection over it, it disappears. That little sticker just disappeared right off of the car. Now there is some discoloration over here on the car. So what the spot healing brush does is it takes the surrounding elements like color, form, lighting, and all that, and it helps to heal or repair the image. So all these imperfections gets taken away. Can you guys see that? Let me zoom in really far here. Let's do this big spot here. Well, let's do this one over here. See this spot here? You just take your brush, go over it, it's gone. So you can do a lot of nice, intricate healing, spot healing, healing work on your images to make them perfect. You can correct anything on any image, which really helps with things like portraiture. If you are retouching a lot of images and there's lots of markings, it's not the right lighting, there's a whole bunch of things that need to be done on the photograph to repair it, this works extremely well. Oh, by the way, guys, they did take the rotate canvas and put it in Photoshop as well, which is really handy. So when you need to move around, you can. Are you guys getting sick? Sorry. Let me zoom in here and just we're going to continue. You can increase your brush size over here. Just like so. This does pop up for you automatically. So you can do that and you can just spot heal literally everything and everywhere. And it pulls all the information from the surrounding area and heals the image for you. So very, very handy tool. Let's go into our brushes menu. A little plane right up there. Uh, okay, brushes menu right here. Now, if you double tap on it, you can see all of the brushes. It looks like they expanded the brush library in here, which is great because they didn't have very much when I first use this program. Oh, there's an oil background mix. There's oil brushes. There's pastel brushes. There's so many brushes in here now. My goodness. There's spatter brushes, mixed brushes, cross hatching, rough scratchy brushes, spatter and texture. There's so much that you can create in here now. Let's press the plus sign and see where those new brushes are. Discover new brushes. Takes us to the website. <laughs> and of course, Kyle Webster's brushes are the first thing that pops up. Hi, Kyle. <laughs> okay, so you can sign in to download his brushes. And here is the Keith Herring brushes. So there's a mega pack here you can download. There's the Keith Herring ones you can download. There's dry media, watercolor. Like there's so, ooh, there's gouache. Okay, that's really cool. Um, oh my God, I'm gonna have so much fun. Wow, okay. I'm gonna download one of these. Let's see, which one should we download first? You know what, let's just download the Keith ones because I'm pretty sure everyone is like, ooh, Keith Herring, download, sure. So while that's going on, there we go. Let's go back to Photoshop. That was the fastest download I've ever experienced, but okay, here we go. Add, import from files. I don't know where they downloaded to. Okay. All right, so it gets defaulted to your iCloud drive. That is where your files get downloaded. So I'm gonna choose that and whoa, okay. That was really fast. Did you guys see that? Um, okay, so <laughs> that just uploaded a whole bunch of brushes. There's 37 brushes. Keith, wow. Okay, let's try marker brush old one and let's See about layouts. I'm gonna do it in probably this yellow color. Choose that yellow color. There we go. Brush size. That's a fun one. All right, let's also do, let's do a different kind of brush. Let's try that one. 
new layer. You can always hide and show your layers by just pressing the first icon and the right toolbar, which is your layers icon. I'm just going to hide it. That's pretty cool. All right, so you can definitely get a lot of different effects. I'm sorry, guys, if you can hear the rain. Uh, Florida is experiencing uh, the bands of a hurricane at the moment. And you can experiment a lot more than what I'm doing here. But as you can see, you can get quite a few fun different effects with these brushes. There we go. So you can have like this interesting like drip effect happening. So you can definitely create a lot with having these new brushes, with the spot healing. I think honestly what I'm most excited for and most excited about is the spot healing brush. That is such a nice tool because you can get rid of so many imperfections. And that is everything new that's in Photoshop on the iPad. Uh, go ahead and let me know down below what you guys think. What is your favorite new tool? What will you be utilizing? Creating your own brushes is definitely going to be something that I'm going to be tapping more into. So if you guys like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you all in my next video. See you soon, creatives. Oh, 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 oh,